even darkness flows. There is a ladder. Climate. My mother's name was Susan Smith, and she lived on an island in Maine, and she was a very wise woman, very spiritual, and she and I were very, very close. So this exhibit starts with a series of grief paintings that I painted right after my mother died, while I was still in her home. I did a series of 32 paintings. We're showing six of them here today. Bam! A huge train hit me sideways, full force. I was derailed completely. A personal tsunami has taken me under to the bottom of the ocean from where it came. And now I lie at the bottom of the ocean, looking up and wondering, do I want to go back up there? Can I? And how? What effort will it take to move my body from the ocean floor and reach the air necessary to live on the earth? Maybe it's just a decision to let my body float to the surface and breathe. I did four paintings after the grief painting series that were what follows. And really it was a way for me to express exactly what had happened in my mother's actual dying. So it almost felt like when we were by her bedside. Some of it's real deep deep, heavy, like blood thick, and some of it's ethereal. Clustered, we watch. You look back wide-eyed with the dying, finding a path through our gaze. We hold vigil. You make the journey, but not alone. We watch. Carefully, we hold vigil. There's a presence here. This is what Mom and I did. We looked for the presence in dying. It can be convoluted, but you can discern presence. Convoluted, twisted, coiled, complicated, involved. It's involved. Look for the presence. Discern the presence. It's there. There's a presence when you die. called Joy After Completion, and it's part of the What Follows series. So it's the possibility that joy follows grief once you've been through the deep process of feeling the loss, that you actually can feel the undying love. Joy, she flew away. She left the hard shell of the body she went into the mist. No easy journey. You need a guide map and some guides. Place yourself in the hands of holy beings. I painted them when I got back into my studio. They were really about the actual experience of mom dying and, and what followed her death. And I needed to move through that before I could continue on with the next series, 
which is called reemergence, which is more about me coming back into my own life. What is emerging? It's so painful in its submerged disengagement from the mothership, from the shell of the mothership. For the mothership herself departed some time ago, and now the seed detaches into the murky essence, the true mother of us all. Let me fall into her waters, finally, completely, safe. I am being born. Sometimes it takes a lot just to get here to this kernel inside the kernel, and then to sit down in it and do nothing but breathe. I've got great respect. I bow down in homage, then open my palms to the spirit who got me here. is called Failed Attempt of Solitude, and it happened when I went back to my mother's home to do an artist retreat there, by myself, in the woods, and it really was a very dark time. I think it was sort of the wrapping up of my grief. A glimpse into the primal water where I'm swimming lost, yearning for a spot to rest, to feel at home, to feel in place, yearning to feel in place. I want a structure to hold my unanchored soul. Find a home in yourself, my mother whispers. Even darkness flows. There is a ladder, climb it. It flows loose, but feels tight, bound. Yet remember, child of darkness, you are also a child of light. And it does flow loose, only appears tight. Go through appearance. Even this is beautiful. I got an email in response to what I sent out announcing this show from a couple who had purchased a painting of mine decades ago. And it ends up, they are on their own journey with grief. And the husband, I sent him the poem, The River of Grief, that goes with this grief painting. He was very moved by it and he read it back to me in the most beautiful way, and I asked him if I could share it because it's very moving the way he reads it. And he said that he would be honored to have his reading of Tremaine's poem played anywhere because her words awaken some part of me that we all share and need to find ways to express. Which is actually, I think, one of the main reasons for this show is to have a space where we can freely express our grief and our love. Some things change you permanently, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Not a thing. You just are changed. No choosing, no choice, just the holy river crashing in its riverbed, rounding a turn, slowing down, moving, moving, moving. And you move with it. No choosing. It just does. You just do what it does. Because it has control. It is your God, the one you worship in fear, 
the one whose mercy you live in, the one whose grace you count on as it tumbles, crashes, flows, and moves. When I came back from being with my mom, Penn Medicine at Home picked me up in terms of bereavement counseling, and I got counseling through their services. Then I also as well became a volunteer at Penn Medicine and Hospice. So we're really grateful to have them sponsoring this exhibit. I wanted a way for people to be able to express their own feelings of grief or love or healing. So I set up this, this uh, continual cord here with some rectangles of paper and clips where people can feel free to write down those expressions and add them to what I'm calling this collective cord of prayer flags. So by the end of the exhibit, maybe we'll have a whole set of another set of prayer flags. These last pieces bring us right up to the present. They're a sampling of the work that I've been doing in 2019. I call it Door to the Hidden because this process, starting with the grief paintings, is new to me where I combined freely painting and then freely responding to the paintings with writing. So I call that Door to the Hidden. It's another way in. It's like two languages. I continue to work in this manner right now. We'll see what the future holds, but that's what I'm doing right now, is painting very freely their works on paper and then responding spontaneously by writing. Rare orchid, let it blossom in its time. Let it unfold of its own accord, slowly, gently, imperceptibly, like that rare orchid you spoke of, Mom. It's multiplied in my window, in the light of my window, protected by the pine and nestled in peace. Brand new bold stems have come. It's you. I made it, Mom. I made it through the grief. I'm happy now, I'm living again. Changed and sustained by your life and death, I love you. You fell into my soil like the leaves from the trees, bountifully nourishing my essence. I grow, strong, deep, solid. I can touch the sky, I touch the sky indeed. You smile, ever my encourager, now you are my guide, my holy being. Remember how we spoke as you were leaving this earth? I place myself in the hands of holy beings. <clears throat> I do that now while still on earth. Thank you, always. The line that stretches back before time and forever. That's where I meet you.